I'll tell you, I came to that event one time and my son, um, he wanted me to, to bid on the bike that you were auctioning. And we used to auction these kids' bikes. And he's like, so I bought the bike and then I couldn't get in the car. And so I had to ride it home from Beverly Hills <laughs> to Hancock Park. <laughs> what? Hey, what's up? Hi, everyone. Welcome to Hawk vs. Wolf. We are joined by a special guest. I'm just filling in, Jason, because he's doing his thing. Ah! He's prepping. Yes. Mark Norman's here. Hey, hey, good to be here. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's an yeah. honor. Can't believe he's here. I know. Such it's a weird cool. way how it works, because I heard just today, when you're on your way here, how, because I saw the video where who's the best uh, celebrity comedian, and I was like, Fuck, you must be really good because no. there's a lot of people on the list. And Tony reeled you off first. Yeah, what and was I guess that? You saw, yeah, you. I was shy. What, were you drinking? That was, <laughs> that was great. I mean, I'm not even a celebrity and I suck yeah, now right. at skating. That is, so. that is weird you brought that up. Okay, so, well, here we go. I have seen many times on comments on our podcast people requesting you be on it. Wow. That, sure. I'll, I'll just start with that. Okay. And secondly, whenever I comment on someone, you know, people who, like, who is a musician or an actor who skate, if, and whoever I say, everyone says, now nah, Mark Norman. Wow. Well, I should say, I made a lot of fake accounts and commented <laughs> on all those. Yeah. But, but. The, the funny thing about that dude uh, that asked me, I was in New York with my wife and I just went out to get coffee. And you know how, dudes will lurk at certain hotels and they'll have the camera. Oh, they yeah. were there because Dave Matthews was there. Uh, so they're waiting for him to come out. And I came out and the guy's like, switch gears. Yeah. And so he follows me from this coffee shop because he knew that I came from the hotel. And he's just looking for stuff to say. Like, hey man, what about, how's Bam doing? Yeah, like, yeah. How, how are the skate parks? And he's like, who do you think is the best celebrity <laughs> skater? And, and I said your name. Thank you. And I'm not kidding. 10 minutes later, I went up to my hotel room and you had DM'd me like right at that exact same time. Whoa. If you were going to DM Tony Hawk, that would be a good time. Yeah. But it know, almost like, felt like- You've it, got it in. It wasn't out yet though. Oh, what? You hadn't seen it? It had just happened. Wait, you accidentally DM'd him? Yeah, yes. And you didn't know that he had a video saying that you were the best celebrity skateboarder? No. No, I, I don't think so. Whoa. No, 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 no. It, it had just happened on the street. It was coincidence? I had just walked, I had walked wow. from the street into my hotel oh, room. Oh, I thought we told the story And then he DM'd me and I'm like, was he, was he in the bushes or something? Like, how did that That's just happen? That's wild. Kismet, you know, yeah. the, the, the great sphere. But and I think I explained that to you, but I don't think you realized it was in real time. No, I didn't get it. Because you, you gave me a nice thing on the Nine Club. You were like, hey, good, good, good performance or whatever. So then you would, you would DM, DM me first. So I was like, all right, I have an in. <laughs> yeah. And then I that guess, was a while back. Oh, yeah. So I, we were already chatting. You've been a fan of his skateboarding for some time. Wow, I've been skateboarding absolutely. Yeah. How good is he? <laughs> I'm not good. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm horrible. You just horrible. already said that you're not famous. So fuck off. If I dropped in on that, I would uh, I would rupture my groin. That doesn't count because right. you already admitted you're a street skater. Street guy. Street guys would all die if they drop in. There's a fucking handful of of street dudes that have died that can <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that can make true. that. It's a different kind of thing. So yeah. Is, you know, if Tony and I come to your nearest handrail, oh, yeah. it's not gonna be a it's not gonna be good. Then good we point. literally die. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. We're gonna need an ambulance at the bottom of the rail because that's what I want to land in. Yeah, yeah. No, I take <laughs> just drive off because that's what's happening. I've split a rail before. It's rough. So you can you can you skate rails, ledges, like what kind of a again, this is my heyday. I'm old and right. gay now. But that's, so I'm but that's, different. Brett, let's brag. What are you capable of doing? Well, I, was, I, I don't uh, know. I was a flip trick guy, you know, okay. like 360 flips down some stairs, uh kick How flip many note slides. Uh give me a fiver. Get casual. out. Yeah, it's casual. Good. But that was again, that was in the nineties, you know. As your style, you were like a good style or you were a no, fun, ugly guy. Super goofy, and I had a weird ballerina pose before I did a trick. I'll send you some videos. Yes, it's pretty please. sad. We'll put it in the podcast. Yeah, but I, people I, need all to those know. things you just said, like that that doesn't matter. You know what I mean? When because you see some some street hardcore street skaters that that have a strange pose and oh, they yeah. but but they're they're revered for it. Right. Yes, exactly. That's what makes you stand out. Andrew yeah. Reynolds has got a weird style, but it works. Well, it's also yeah. what you end up doing. Mm -hmm. If you end up sure. doing tricks that are monsters, sure, and you've sure. got a weird style, 
but nobody's ever done what you did before, yes. then you, you get a pass. It's like Ray Charles. He's a blind weirdo, but on a on a piano, he's a killer. Right. You I know? heard he, even, he kept trying to bone people by just touching their wrists. Yeah, I yeah. I feel like that's not a good tell. That's true, because you're going to be a hideous like, face. Yeah, my wife's really hot. I've never noticed how sexy her wrist is. I think that's just a fat thing. Let me see how much uh, cushion is on that wrist. I oh, think that's, that's what, what he, that is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you just check to see how fat I am? Well, I can see. I, I, <laughs> unlike him, I'm not, I'm not blind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting you can see me. <laughs> but, you, you know, you're doing well. You, you're 50. Or, right. You're a DILF. Yeah. A what? A DILF. Oh, yeah, Dad. I, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No one's, you, that's new to me. Well, you, you got well, kids. to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you well, dilfed. with that leg, you shouldn't be doing anything physical. <laughs> <Have you> been, <laughs> but I've seen this guy limping all over. It's ridiculous, isn't it? I know. When I he gets bad. off the ramp, that's the craziest part about you skating these days is because you can skate in a way where I know how hurt you are, and it's amazing what you can do up there. But I also know how many years you've been doing it. But when you fall off and you get up, I know. I'm like, it made whatever you did before you fell off so much greater. Because I'm like, oh my god, you look like I almost say to him sometimes, "Yeah, okay." Because I'm not sure if that was a bad fall off. Of course, you get up like you're in hell. Yeah, I, I am in hell. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's true. Any fall could be the 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 big one. He puts the hand on the ground, and one on the knee, and it's like. And we're getting up. And yeah. I'm like, man, that's yeah. looking forward to climbing those stairs again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to get an elevator yeah, at some point. Say. One of those old lady carriers, you know, up the oh, stairs. Oh, that would be pretty good. That would be pretty good. <gasps> I've always wanted one of those, but a fast one, because I know if I do make it to an old age, I'm going to still be impatient. Right, right. And I feel like the only problem I have with that electric thing that goes up to your thing is it's fucking slow. Like, yeah. I need one where you yeah. has gears. Like, beep, 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 beep. And you can. Right. Get going. I do want to say that one of the biggest compliments I've received recently is that I just told you I was coming off a broken leg and you said you didn't even know. And, didn't and know. You're like, yeah, you guys are skiing good. And I was like, well, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm coming off a broken leg. And he's like, oh, really? Yeah, cool. Yeah, no, I had no idea. I mean, the walking was rough. Oh. <laughs> but the, the, <laughs> yeah. the skating, I watched you guys for, you know, five, ten minutes and it it seemed normal. Yeah. We're on, we're on the comeback. Yeah, we both made new tricks today. Same trick. Hulk versus Wolf. Yeah. Bro, money. tricks that we used to do, yeah, not yeah. new tricks, but yeah. whatever. <laughs> the body, the human body changes every seven years, and you don't have the same things that you were made of seven years ago. Is that right? And I haven't skated for fucking 20 years, so I just learned fakey dark side grinds in my new body. dark side, blind side, blind side. Yeah, yeah, ah, Ray Charles, <laughs> callback <laughs> seven years, huh? Yeah. That's why I'm by now. Not, I used to not be. Stop now I'm into it. Yeah, that's mine. That's oh, my is that your thing? That's my whole gimmick. Oh, <laughs> oh I didn't know. Sorry. Well, what are you Tough doing guy later? Tough that sucks dicks. Hey. <laughs> Wait, no really? one's doing that. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> you didn't? You kind of came late. You didn't know he broke his leg and that I'm a homo? No, this changes everything. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have showed up. How'd you break your leg? Was it because of him? <laughs> he was trying to get away yeah. from me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for the limp. A huge fan. <laughs> yeah, it's like a wounded gazelle. It's easy to catch. <laughs> he is now. I get him all the time now. Oh, far out. All right, I'm learning a lot here. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Welcome to the show. Yeah, good to be here. But yeah, uh, <laughs> the limping is all part. I mean, the Rodney Mullen in the documentary just just said it so beautifully that that speech at the end where he talked about how it's worth it. Oh, and, yeah. And, you know, you got to keep going. And I like crack every morning getting out of bed. But it's for the love of the game. Beautiful. Yeah. He, I mean, Rodney he's, definitely. He's good at that. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he was very eloquent and putting into words what we all feel but can't explain. Yes. It's because yes. Um, we live in pockets of that and he lives in it 24-7. Right. Like, to me, he seems like a guy that thinks about everything through and through from every possible angle before he walks into anything. Yeah. So he knows why he does this or why he does that or why he did this in the past or why he will never do that again. Like, mm -hmm. And it's never like, for me, I'm like, I'll never do that again. And then I probably will. Yeah. He seems like the kind of guy that when he makes his decision, it's final. Yes, yes. And he's so well-spoken and poignant yeah. and, and poetic when he says stuff. <laughs> he, you're like, that was beautiful. He really thinks before he speaks, though. Right, like, right. When, <laughs> when we interviewed him, there was a couple of times. It made it better to me because it made it more intense. Sure. Because we'd go, so something, something, and he'd go. Mm. 
Yeah. yeah. And you're freaking this, out. And you're like, fuck, man, this is yeah. going to be fucking crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's like hot dogs. You know what I mean? You're like, right, wow, right. crazy. Yeah. It's, but he puts so much thought into. And also, as a comedian, we we make fun of everybody who gets sincere. So secretly, it was fun to hear him be so sincere because we're all very closed off and cynical as comics. So I loved watching that because I never get to hear a guy talk like that. Because if you open up as a comedian, everybody's like, ah, look at this douche, whatever, you uh, know. And he just opened up and it was it was perfect. I can tell because anytime somebody in comedy tells me something they don't want any, anybody else to know, they go, this stays between us, right? Yes, exactly. And I go, I mean, yeah, I, I, don't, I wasn't planning on but. But yeah. fuck, goddamn, that's an insecure thing to run run to me. Like, oh, I definitely wasn't going to, but now I will tell you to your face, I will not. Yeah. Does that make you feel better? We're weird. Yes, it does. We'll open up about our molestation all day long, but then we're like, easy with the uh, with the feelings, you know. Can't let, <laughs> can't let that out. You can only laugh at your molestation. Yes. You can't be serious with that. Right, yeah. right. If I'm, like, actually telling you how bad it was, that's not cool. No. But if no, you're like, no. oh, suck my dad's dick. Woo. You know, yeah. Everyone's like, hey, it's kind of funny. So you either become a comedian or you become a, a full advocate and champion of a cause. Yes. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. You roads. can't do both. Yeah. can't do both. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that yeah. or off yourself. Yeah, they, we do that too. That no, sucks. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Sometimes it's an accident, you know, with the drugs. Right. Right. So, Mark, you, uh, we just talked a little bit. You grew up in New Orleans. Yes, sir. Skating a little bit. Yeah. Weird town to beat skating in. Not a great town. Skating wasn't a cool thing. I feel like California, it's like a, mm. am I going to be a soccer player? Or Depends on the year. Skater. Oh, yeah. that's true. That's he's true. Got, comes he's and goes. the generation of. It wasn't cool. It wasn't cool for me. Right. He made us cool. Yeah. Uh, but, ah. but he had to go through the, you know what the lamest thing is in school? Skateboarders. That's really? What he, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I know. That's yeah. what I said, Whoa. right? Because I'm not, I'm pretty old too, but my era, if you skated, you weren't uncool. You were, you but was it like yeah. the New Orleans? Like you got, you got hassled for skating? Oh, well, I grew up in a predominantly black neighborhood and it was still very <laughs> why that, divided, why you know? Do you have to do that? Just because it's such a silly sentence, you know? I grew up in a black neighborhood, so it was like, skateboarder, get up, yeah. you know, oh, like okay. a lot of chasing and it was weird and not, you know, basketball was the normal thing. So to skateboard was, was kind of dorky and white. Right. And now I see kids of all races skating and it's great. Yeah. Yeah. They've, they've definitely opened up. Oh know? yeah. Everybody's accepting of everybody now in skateboarding. That yes. Is. Even not ladies. In, not in everywhere else. Yeah. There's a, there's a thing going around right now. People try to keep sending it to me because of my gayness. It's like, how do you feel about this 27-year-old oh, trans I saw that. woman beating yeah. a 13-year-old? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I don't even have to read the article. I'll tell you what, I will read it, but I can already tell you that this is a fucking contest. Stop adding that she's 13 and the other person used to have a beard and own a, a Harley. Yeah, like, the, the age She's is fucking trans now and it's a girls contest for adults. Uh -huh. And oftentimes these days in adult contests, yes, a lot of the competitors are 13. Right. And if you lose, stiff shit. Stop trying to bring it up like you stole a 13-year-old girl's trophy. Like you, oh, wait, you she didn't. was 29, right? I think so. That is, to me, that's a big jump. Yeah, but I beat, you know what? Shouldn't it be I beat, 18? I beat Sean be White when he was 13. Really? Yeah, and then Sean White beat me when he was 13 too. Wait a and minute. And I'm pretty sure that after I beat him, I was like, suck it, you little yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. And nobody said anything. I think I told his mom to suck it. But as people, well, and people, way possible. people <laughs> tend to focus on, especially the age, like in the Olympics too. Like, wasn't it a 14 year old girl that won? I was like, yeah, but that's not, Unusual yeah, for skating not weird for us. Yeah, ah, yeah. I, I mean, see. I I turned pro when I was fourteen. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. Steve Caballero and all those guys. That's how old they were when they became legends. It's stuff. more. It's that's more wild. that it's it's unusual now because you reach an age of responsibility, eighteen to twenty, and you can continue to skateboard and you right. continue to actually get better at it. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the case when I was young. Right. Right. Oh, mate, DoorDash. You want to eat? You ran out of toothpaste. You ever been like late at night and you got sticky breath and you want to brush your teeth and maybe you got a date and you're like, man, I don't want to make out with her with sticky breath. I got to brush my teeth, but I can't go and leave the house. You can get DoorDash to send you toothpaste. Boom. And then you can just be passing on <laughs> doing it over 300, over, over 300,000 partners. 
You can support your neighborhood and go to the local places, all the different restaurants. I'm not going to say some of their names, but yeah, you could go to the Cheesecake. Man, Cheesecake Factory has so many options. You can get so many different snacks to your house. This is ridiculous. DoorDash, everybody. Our listeners can get 25% off, everybody. 25% off and zero delivery freeze on fee. <laughs> delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code WOLF. Oh, 25% off up to $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order, mate. When you download the DoorDash app and you go to the app store, you enter the code WOLF. Don't forget, that's code WOLF for 20, 25% off. Uh, your first order with DoorDash, subject to change terms, apply. Hey, you. Yeah, you got bush. You definitely do if you haven't tried the best products from our sponsor today, Manscaped. Talking control of your bush is important. Sorry, taking control of your bush is important. These products are so good, you're going to show pride in your new bush-free yard. It's a fact that you will have to you will have the best kept nut sack in the coldest sack. Save big. And be the most hygienic version of yourself by using our discount code HAWKWOLF for 25% off free shipping, mate, at manscaped.com. I'm a man with hair, and I fight the good fight. Lately, I've got hairy legs. My wife seems to like it. So I'm doing that. But the day that I don't want to do it, like the other day, I got a tattoo of my groin area, and I got hairy legs. What to do, Jason? Manscaped. It's the only product I use to shave hair. 20% off with free shipping. Manscaped.com. Use the code, everybody. HawkWolf. It's time to level up from the Amazon to... um The Amadong? <laughs> wow. With the ultimate bushwhacking tools from Manscaped. <laughs> What do you yeah. mean? You got older and just well, you, there, out? you couldn't make a living at it, so you had to get, get a job. job. Ah, um, but then so in your head, you were just sort of indoctr- indoctrinated that what well, you can't keep skating past eighteen or twenty. Sure. So you wouldn't continue to evolve at it. Yes. You know. Why not though? Just because it was uh, uh, stigmatized, like hey, you can't be a thirty-year-old skateboarder. Yeah, like it, yeah. It was, and it was like it was like it's a toy. You could tell yes. that. I, we had Lance Mountain on it, and I could tell by him at one point, he was on his way out, mm-hmm. and he was like 24 or some, something ridiculous yeah. where the, that Stacey was like, I'll get you to work, uh, you know, in the advertising part of, of the, like, we'll get you right, to try right. for your next career. Because exactly. obviously you're on your way out right now. You're 24. Yeah. And yeah. then to know that Lance had like, 30 more years exactly. of professional skateboarding ahead of him. Not to mention there was probably another 15 years of highest level contest yeah, skating. Yeah. Like yeah. he was nowhere near on your way out. He was top five for like the next 10 years. I know, I know. But those guys created I'm that try before that. Me. All right. He's sweating too much? He's sweating. Good. That's what happened to me. <laughs> sweating balls over here. Well, that's the weird thing about skateboarding is when I was banging... It was a it was a lot of like uh, degenerate. These are druggy. These kids are on the street, you know. And I'm like, were you good when that movie came out? Kids, the kids. Oh yeah, that that's was, your that that's was your big. that right. was my era. Right. So these kids were skateboarding, they get into fist fights and yeah. give people AIDS. But yes, that I, happened all the time when yeah, I was coming up. Yeah, right. You really had to watch that. But I feel like uh, you know, it's actually kids outdoors in the sun, being active, yeah. not looking at a phone or your fucking video game. Oh my god, it or was great. Trying to be a gangbanger. There's there's way worse things. I got a 13-year-old and I've watched he lived in Hollywood and now he lives in Huntington Beach. And what he does, I mean, he started as a skateboarder because his dad's one. Mm-hmm. And then he got more into video games and into gangster rap. And all these friends were lit and kind of like had seven hundred dollar sneakers and they were bitches, man. I didn't say it, but they were bitches. Right. And right. now he hangs out with a bunch of dudes that skate, surf. And jump BMXs all day mm-hmm. and and shoot firecrackers out of their ass. And I'm like, that's a that's a man. That's a better life. It is. 
I, feel, I do feel way <laughs> when I send me videos of his friends having firecrackers shoot out of their ass. I'm like, you'll be, you'll be all right. Yeah. Well, you see all these kids now with the social media. And now I sound like a 90 year old man. These kids today, but they're all like their anxieties through the roof. Suicide is up and depression is up. And it's like if you just went outside and fell down and tried to skate and learned how to heel flip, I feel like you'd be a happier kid. Yep. You're right. Yeah, I mean that that's definitely what we're advocating for with doing skate parks too. Is oh yeah. Most most of the the not the pitch, but but the highlights of it is mental health. Yes. Here, here. Because skate parks could have used one when I was a kid. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I know. Up. And then because then you just had to, you know, do comedy as backup. Yeah, yeah, right. But did you ever th think you were gonna get serious about skating? I did for a while. I was, you know, you start getting pretty good and you're filming it and it's fun and you love it. And you're like, this is my whole life. You know, Are I'm, you already I'm a comedian. No, I was like 14, 15 skateboarding. Like, this is it. I have all my friends skate. All we do is skate. This is it. I'm obsessed with skate culture. I have a trans world and a thrasher subscription. Hey, trans world. Good name for that skater. Yeah, I love but, how you pointed at me. That's good. Cool. Oh, oh, yeah. I well, do love trans world. <laughs> but uh, I'm just saying, I thought, hey, this is it. And then you get older and like I was drinking more and then you want to get laid and then you try to meet girls and all that. So they ruin everything. Yeah, they do. So I had to, uh, I had to just, put I like the bed. order of that. I'm trying to get laid, trying to meet girls. <laughs> he said drugs in between. <laughs> oh <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So, you know, and then, you know, you, you start being lazy and be like, ah, I don't want to go out there today <laughs> and get sweaty. And then comedy's great. Cause I can just write down jokes and then go tell them and then. When did that drunk. start? I started 22. Just uh, open mic guy? Just open mics, yeah. Just like I had nothing going on, rudderless, you know, failed out of college. And, uh, Are you a doorman? What do you mean? I at just, the, I the, go to the, oh, I'm, I'm new to comedy and I am now going to the comedy store and people are slowly but surely befriending me and I'm starting to realize that everybody here put in some hard times. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm Silver Spoon <laughs> shithead because I am not going to be the door guy at the comedy no, store. Like, no, no, that's shit. But it, it seemed like I've been in a room where everybody in there that was doing stand up, they'd all been the door guy. Yeah, all of them. That was a, a progression, you know? So door it's guy. not the same in the East Coast? No, no. I think it's open mic, get good, get an act, work, work your way up through the clubs, and then oh. eventually do theaters. But now it's all TikTok and stuff. But, but wait, did, TikTok, you start, did you start that in New Orleans? I started stand up in New Orleans at open mics and at bars, and we would drive to Baton Rouge. You drive to Lafayette. You drive to Houston. That was the only way to get stage time, which is why skateboarding is so great. You can just get up and go out. You know, where with comedy, you need an audience. You need a, a house with, or a building with chairs and a microphone, and it's a lot of moving parts. But skateboarding is just up and out. If you have a place to go, that's hey, true. Comedy is find a ledge anywhere. I feel like uh, it depends on who you are in skateboarding. Most people skate with people, and it's a social event. Like I grew up in a place where there wasn't that many skateboarders, so yeah. it was a bit lonely. But comedies, for me, it's pretty lonely. Mm -hmm. Like you're by yourself all the time. It's a loner thing. And then Much when like you get there, it's like a lot of people are not happy for your potential success. <laughs> it seems pretty catty. Yes, so you, it is. So you never get like, uh, oh, you're new. Like, uh, right. let me, no, no one's trying to fucking throw me a bone. They're like, fuck your bones. Like, who the fuck is this guy? He did no open mic. What is that? Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm, I know that I know I'm, I know I'm like lucky, but I'm not like trying to take your job or anything. Like I don't go long like TI or anything <laughs> like but I can tell that it's not. I, most of it is I drive by myself to the to the spot. I think about what I'm going to do. I get there, and someone goes, "This is what you're going to do, and when you're going to go." And I go, "Okay." And then I sit by myself again, and then my name comes out, and then I do it, and then I leave, and, and then you leave. three people go, "Nice," or yeah. "Fuck you," and then that's it. You know, like just lately, someone's like, "Hey, man, do you want to do a gig with me?" And I was like, "Yeah, I would do any gig right, with anyone." Right. But most of the time, is the opposite. Yeah, everyone's sort of. Maybe there's like a week or two, but then everyone's rooting like, hey, for you. Right. Yeah. yeah, everyone's rooting for you. Yeah, you land a trick, the whole place goes, ah. Yeah. That was my favorite part of any skate video. It's like, oh, he did it. And they're hitting the, the tails right. on the cement. I love that. But yeah. you don't get that with stand up. Like, no. Oh, who's no, the this crowd, douche? the crowd is laughing hysterically. Yeah. And the rest of the comics are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like that, though? Do you feel, or is there more camaraderie in the level that you've gotten to? Well, I feel like coming up, there was a lot of camaraderie because we're all in boot camp together in comedy. You know, like we're all bombing, we're all poor, we're all bad at this. And then you find your crew. And I have my crew that I started with and I'm still friends with today. 
And uh, you need that crew because comedy is lonely and vicious uh. and, and uh, unforgiving. What, what was your, uh, what would you say was one of your big breaks? Uh, let's see. Well, I started opening for Amy Schumer oh. pretty early on and she was blowing up. And then I started opening for other guys and that, that was huge. And I got on Conan and then it's slowly, once you get the first credit, it's easier to get the next one because right. you're in the door now. And then I got a Comedy Central half hour and then so on. So what year was that? Oh, 2012. Shit. So yeah, good that time. so recent. To, to you and <laughs> yeah, 2012. That seems like a long time. Is that right? Yeah, something like that. I mean, I started comedy in 06. Shit. In, in oh, 2006. Yeah. Oh wow. I know. What'd you start skateboarding in like 1979 <laughs> yeah. or something? 77. Oh, okay. Wow, that's wild. Yeah. Well, wait, what are you 60? <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Hold on, I can't I'm do like, math here. He's teetering on it. You may as well hit that's it off the bat. That's not a bad thing. You look <laughs> like you're, 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 old, and there it is, 60. Yeah. Called him wow. fully old. But you know, you that's look why great. you're complimenting my skating. Because <laughs> you thought I was 60. I get it. That's all right. What are you, I'll 55? take what I get. Well, these old guys. Are I am ripping. 54. 54. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty old. But you're still ripping. Oh, thank you. That's what it's all about. And that's the beauty of stand-up is I can, you know, Don Rickles was 99 out there going, ah, Mexicans are in the kitchen or whatever the hell he was saying. You know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, still going because you, you don't need to hurt your body. Yeah, that's what I it's like about mind. comedy. It's when you're about to do it, there's like a bunch of nerves and you never know what's going to happen. Just like skateboarding. Yeah. But then after it, win or lose. You don't go to the hospital, mm -hmm. and it's and it feels really good because I I I will feel that after a set. I'm like that was awesome, and I'm not. I I'm gonna sleep fine tonight. Like today, I fucking hurt my ankle, and then I made some bung ass trick. But that's skateboarding. You have to be. Yeah. You have to be hurt. Even the I'm starting to notice now, like when the, my knee pads get caught and I hit my elbows hard on the ground, and then I walk up the stairs and I'm like, Oh yeah. <laughs> oh. Definitely. I hurt my elbows. <laughs> oh, mate. Talking to you today about BetterHelp. BetterHelp is online therapy. Uh, I go to therapy. I haven't gone in a long time. I think I'm actually going to just go on BetterHelp today. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty easy. You go on there, you talk. Apparently, you just talk, and then within 48 hours, you got yourself a therapist. You can see him face to face. You can talk to him on the phone. You can do it which whichever way you want. I think in these days, I think TikTok, if you have TikTok, you should have a therapist because I believe it's hacking my positive attitude with videos of mean people. And I'm like, man, there's so many mean people in the world. I need to talk to somebody who can be like, Jason, look, there's not that many mean people in the world. There's a lot of nice people that listen to your show. They're so nice that you should give them a discount code to call a therapist. Okay. See? They already did a great job. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash hawkwolf. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash hawkwolf. Speciosa. Kratom, yo. Oh, yeah. Hey everybody, Alice May for Hawk vs. Wolf talking about Kratom. Do you know what Kratom is? Do you do Kratom? I do Kratom. Kratom is cool because it's like an herbal planty thing that came from the earth and it makes you not get like, you know, stupid and then get in trouble and stuff. It's just like a mellow out thing. Like if you're sore, like I'm sore all the time. So I just do it all the time. That way I'm less sore all the time. See what I mean? But also, it doesn't make you, like, you know, get dizzy, vomit on yourself and say, you know, get in trouble. Wake up in, in the morning with regret. Kratom doesn't do any of that. But it does do all the other cool things, like, makes you feel a little loose. Like, woo, come on, come on. Hey, boss, maybe uh, your wife's hot. What's up? Okay, don't do that. But anyway, um, they recommend be beginner capsules, basically... They're easy to use. They recommend the green strains. I think that's what I use. They're the most popular. 100% satisfaction. Or your money back. Guaranteed. Yo, tell, I will tell the audience that they... Uh, wait, they got a code? Yes, a code. You can... Oh, okay. The code can be used again. Because, you know, especially when it comes to Kratom. 
you if it's good and you like it and you only use the code one time, it's 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 bullshit. So get use the code again. Here we go. Pray, code try creative now. Twenty percent off, y'all. Go to getsuperleaf.com slash wolf. That's twenty percent off, everybody. Use the promo code Wolf. I like this. So that's getsuperleaf.com slash wolf. Use the promo code WOLF. 20% everybody. 20% off. Because comedy is subjective. You know, it's an art form or whatever you want to call it. So like you can go. I've heard people say like, George Carlin's not funny. I never got it. I know. But with skateboarding, if you land it, you land it. I feel like that. I'm jealous of that with skateboarding. It's the same with basketball. If it goes in, it counts two points. Yeah, yeah that, but that's more of an outsider's perspective. Because if, if you're in... It's the same, dude. Yeah. What? Oh, what do you mean? If you're in the bubble. If you've got the wrong style. Yeah, like you're maybe in the we bubble. Maybe your, we... your trick selection isn't cool. Yeah. There's uh, all that. Maybe no, dudes won't post what a piece of shit you are, but we all know we're thinking. What? Like what? Like a toe drag? What are you talking here? Nah, like people that do fronts it is and they don't, like they make it all stinky looking. <laughs> people that skate and when they skate, they kind of look like their feet are like the silhouette of an onion wing, on, onion ring. Uh-huh. Where it's like a, you've got like a bow-legged thing going. Oh, uh, that's but if you land it, you land it. Who cares about <laughs> that's, your, that's, that's your fucking him. opinion. Those are his pet pet peeves. Oh, okay, mine. okay. I, you got to draw me. <laughs> so, a, I never a heard that ring. Diagram. If you wear like Andy McDonald has shorts, and sometimes his cargo pocket goes past his shorts. Uh huh. I can't take that too uh, serious. Yeah, these are all his. <laughs> yeah, hang-ups. this is personal. But but that, <laughs> that's not. But all of that transcends like that 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 permeates skating and, and it's just like oh that guy he only does the, these tricks or right whatever it is. I mean, people are just critical. Yeah, that's of it. course, of but, course. But I think that there is a more collective welcoming and happiness for success yeah. mm-hmm. as opposed to comedy. I don't know. Gotcha. We, we we keep comparing apples to oranges, but. Well, yes. there's a lot of similarities too. I there mean, are. you're out there; it's individual. You got to do it yourself. Um, I think that's half the reason I'm in love with it because it's. Yes. I'm only yeah. in love with shit that's similar to skateboarding. Same. Fighting is similar to it. Yes. And so is fucking comedy. It the really, feeling really is. Before and after, it's the exact same thing because you care. You yeah. care so much because yes. I love it so much, and it's yeah. just like before a contest. Please fucking you know make this fucking ride. You know what I mean? I'm in the end. I'm like, don't you fucking dare ruin this trick. <laughs> and yeah, then you know yeah, what I mean? And exactly. then when I go on stage, I'm like, don't you fucking dare fuck this line up. <laughs> yeah. And, and then when it works, it's the same thing. Like maybe I don't go, woo, because that'd be weird to do after a joke, but I'm definitely sure. inside my mind. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you can't yeah. claim jokes. You can't claim jokes. That's not cool. Yeah, you got to act like you've been there. You know, just keep going. <laughs> but you know, you ever have like a good a good skate session, you hit a pebble and you fall on your ass? That's a heckler. You know, a heckler like, I was doing great. You, you're ruining it. You're the pebble. You yeah. Know? Wow. So, yeah. You but, don't like hecklers because you're so no, quick. You don't, no. Well, you don't, I mean, I'll, 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 I'll shoot you down. I'll right. do what I got to do. But I, I got an act here. I want to do my show. Okay. Did you find yourself having to learn that? How oh, to shoot them yeah. down? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just like skateboarding. The only way to do it is to do it, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and, and learn, writing a new joke is like learning, a, a, you know, a hard flip. Yeah. It, you, you, you start out, and you're like, I'll never be able to do this. Yep. And then you Fuck just yeah. keep doing it. It's like the documentary. You just kept doing it until you, you, you want to kill yourself, and then you get it. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you got to push. But the only difference is we have to create, you know, there's this physical pain, but we got to invent this. I guess you invented tricks. Uh, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, like a thousand. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah. It's but you got to make a joke out of thin air. It's it's the right. same as if you didn't invent the trick, but you're doing a trick where at the start you're like, oh, I thought I had some sort of grasp on how to make this work, and it's super apparent to me that I don't. Right. When I go to write a new joke, sometimes I'm like, oh, I thought I kind of had a bit of a, gra- yes, a grasp yes. on writing jokes. Like I've right now, I've got a real good start and a real good end. They're so much better than my middle yeah. that I want my middle out. Right. So I'm like, right. well, then just write a new middle. And I can't. <laughs> I write it down and it's shit. It's shit and it doesn't get a laugh and you yeah. want to you hurt your feelings. Yeah. I try I did it at Bray Improv. I did a set with Ryan Sickler. And then the guy there goes, Do you want to do a little set over in the restaurant? And I was like, Yeah, fuck it, man. I'll do any I want practice. Sure. So I go in there and I'm like, I've been working on this new joke in my head about you know dogs licking your butt and what's so bad about it. And I was like, I feel like there's a joke there. So I start talking like dogs about- Dogs licking your butt? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. 
Yeah, I make up this story about how my dad caught, I was bent over and a dog was leaking, my dog was leaking my butt. And my dad was like, hey! and I go, oh, and like, oh shit, I've been, I did something wrong. But I'm like, how long would it take for me to realize that dogs licking your butt is bad? <laughs> and how bad is it if it's right. like, because I'm like, if you get your ass licked by a dog in public, <clears throat> That's bad. Sure. But if you do it in the privacy of your own home and your dog really, see, it's bad. It's a bad joke, but it already had started uh, to come out. Uh, <laughs> and people were like eating burgers going, this guy talking about fucking dogs? Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, this is crazy. Because I, I just made like 500 people laugh. Yeah. And now I'm like, this guy with the nachos is going to punch me in the face. My favorite thing is, is that the story about you telling the joke is funnier than the joke. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, that's the unfortunate part about that joke. Can you do that sort of a meta joke where you're like, hey, I went and told this joke one time and it just wasn't working <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. But let me tell you about right, how right. funny it was, how terrible it was. Right, yeah. No? Well, you can. But we it's call better it, than what I've got so far. So, yeah. That's called a save. And you don't want to rely uh, on saves. No. Like, you know, you have a joke that bombs and you talk about how it bombed and then that kills. And some people, that's their whole act. Really? And you're like, well, how about you write a good joke yeah, and get, right. that, get a laugh on that? I'd rather that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a little too much anxiety in the <laughs> really bad joke that's going to turn around into right. a good joke. I don't feel that confident. But I'm with you on the dog ass licking. I mean, if you're out of toilet paper, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's all I thought. I was like, is it really that bad? I mean, if you sat on him, that'd be different. But if he wanted to. <laughs> yeah, it's his consent. Right? Are, are you, uh, I'm sure you've heard this question before, but are, are you at all more cautious or on guard with what happened with, you know, uh, Chappelle recently. Sure, and sure. Chris Rock and... Right, the words. <clears throat> I, well, I, the words and also just the, the... I don't know what it is, like, the, not the, the... They're empowered somehow to just come up and assault you or to... Oh, that, oh, that yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah, the that physical stuff. stuff. Yeah. Oh, the... Not the, the words. I mean, the words, the... yeah. I mean, I, I understand comedy gets, it gets tricky and... Everyone can be offended by whatever now. So that yes. obviously is it's a difficult dance, especially as a newer comedian. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, but also the the assault factor. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely new and weird. And uh, it, it's a thing, right? It happened, you know, like maybe at an open mic or a bar show. You'd see some drunk guy get a little too, too ornery and go up there. But this Oscars and then Hollywood Bowl, it's like, whoa, we've gotten to another. Yeah. I think kind of just social media, it's so easy to attack people that maybe we're just the line is a little skewed. Yeah. You know, it's a little blurrier. Like, oh, I can just attack somebody. It's like people that are way cockier in cars now just think yes. that they're in a car now when they're on the street exactly. and they tell you to go fuck yourself to your face. And you're like, I could smash you, dickhead. <laughs> Perfect analogy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look at when Mike Tyson, somebody tried to fight the guy on a fucking plane and you're like, are you nuts? It's Mike yeah. Tyson. And then he got punched. Yeah, a lot. That's pretty funny. And, yeah, because yeah, he had yeah. it coming, you know? He did. He did. I watched yeah. the video. Like, you think you can just talk shit because you're in a plane when you know you would not do this if it was yeah. an alley by yourselves? Newsflash. It, it, was, it was amazing the amount of support that he got. Everybody. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. everybody, there's a video of how blacked out the guy was right. before he did that. And we all right. know it's like, I'll give you like five minutes of that shit. When I tell you, don't fucking do that again. Like, know what's on. Yeah, I flew here and there was a baby crying. I was like, I wish Mike Tyson was here to really punch <laughs> this toddler. He could have shut that kid up. For oh, sure. no doubt about it. No, but I was just wondering if you if you're more cautious you're looking at the audience like hmm, maybe I don't know. Not really. I mean, maybe it's a low self esteem, but I'm like nobody's. I'm not important enough to tackle. You know. But I do <laughs> interesting theory. I do think it's weird that I saw a lot of people, and this is where I'm a psycho. I saw a lot of people tweeting after the Chappelle thing, like, "Well, he made a trans joke right after that. He had a funny joke about uh, how the guy had that gun knife. Do you see that? Oh yeah. Uh -huh. And he's like, that was a gun that identified as a knife. And everybody's like, you made a trip. I'm like, he got attacked by a guy who had a weapon. Like, shouldn't we be focusing on that? And, and proceeded to do his act and make a joke. Yes, about it. yes. That's a pro move. That's a pro move. Yeah. And the guy is now in jail because he tried to murder someone a year ago. Did you see that? No. Yeah, they found some back uh, back shit on this guy. So he might he could have murdered Dave Chappelle. Completely, yeah. Wild. That's just, fucking scary, so man, scary. to know that that guy's capable of that. And how did and that happen that at the Hollywood Bowl? I, like, I know. And he got I up know. there. Yeah. To the point where you had to you had to defend yourself. And yeah, apparently John, you know, they stomped the hell out of the guy. And John Stewart was up there stomping, and you're like, wow, this five foot seven Jewish guy, when he's stomping you, you know you fucked <laughs> he really, up. You really he, really, he really chipped in. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, he that guy I mean it's hard enough to go the to the Hollywood Bowl as an audience member. Right. Like right. to just get to your seat. It's a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I feel like the political thing also makes it a potential aggressive thing for comedians these days because I did stand up at some weird little restaurant the other day and Ben Glebe got up and just pointed out a couple people what's so bad about being woke and one lady said one thing and Ben said another and then I was at the bar and there was a guy in the back seat and he was like, would you fucking talk about yourself, bro? Oh, boy. And I was like, I was like, nah. Is he? He. He might. And then Ben keeps poking. And I'm Uh-oh. like, I'm like, dude, Ben is no, I love Ben, but he's not good at defending himself. I'm like, if this dude goes up there, I'm gonna have to fucking do something. Yeah, yeah. And thank you guys you are, are there. you guys are idiots. Like this whole thing is so unnecessary. Yeah, everybody's just angry. It's a bummer. Yeah. It's a weird time. I felt like the room went from ha ha to Yes. We're split, we're divided, and we all know which ones are. You which don't team. you don't feel like people go to the comedy shows to just get away from all that? Like that's that's the I, escape. I Hopefully. think there is that's ninety nine percent, but there's always one guy or guy gal who had a bad day or something's bothering them they, they got a bone to pick and then you you say that one thing yep. about uh you know jews or whatever the hell it is and they're like ah and then yep. they get they get all emboldened so yeah. this guy was so pissed because the girl said I, what's so bad about woke and the girl said there's female and male i don't know what a them is and uh, i was like i was like you see that's pretty fucked up bitch like and if ben glebe starts going for you on this i'm gonna laugh <laughs> and he did so then when he did that this other guy who obviously believes the same thing was mm. like no I'm I'm not cool with you Ben Glebe and I was like how uncool are you gonna be <laughs> right, right I don't I know how far are we taking yeah this? like I know I train I don't like fighting I don't like confrontation sure, sure. but I'm not gonna let my friend get cracked at, at some fucking no. sushi restaurant like, <laughs> and I was like this is this is uh, note to self don't ever go down this road. Yeah. It made the whole room uncomfortable. Well, it's just a weird entitlement too. Like, I don't like that, what you're saying, so I'm going to stop it yeah. with my fist or tackle you or whatever. And you're like, who the fuck are you? Yeah. How about you just sit there and, and go, I didn't he, like that bit. And he's, move he said on to that to him. He didn't like oh. that. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what I, I was like, Ben, stop. Because the guy said something. Ben was like, I'll say whatever the fuck I want. I'm the fucking comedian. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's going to make this guy yeah, more angry. Yeah. I guess that's the thing I can't reconcile is that you're going to watch comedy. I know. It's like, I don't like what you're saying. Like, what well, you came here to, yeah. for me to poke fun at everything. I know. Yeah. Bring at everything. But exactly. It, it well, takes a couple of drinks or something. And, yeah. and you don't, you miss it, I guess. And I think we all live in our bubbles now. Like everybody has, everything is curated for how you want it. You get Uber Eats. I want no cheese. I want no crouton. Tinder even is like too short, too fat, too tall. Everything is our way. Even we used to just sit and watch TV. Now you got a kid with a headphones on. She's listening to a podcast. He's playing video games. He's watching this. Everyone is splintered. So when you go to a comedy show and you have to hear Ben Glebe's thoughts, you're like, I didn't sign up for that thought. And you're like, I know, but this is a comedy show where we all come <laughs> yeah. together. And it's weird for people now because it's like, this is his thought and you didn't choose it. And uh, they can't handle it. They're like, oh, I didn't sign up for that. And you're like, I know, but it's a comedy show. Yeah. You get what you get. Sure. But yeah, that's just that's just how people are. You can't you can't mess with their beliefs for some reason. Yeah. We, I, I have but a more, joke now more than ever. Yes. yes. I have a joke about killing myself. gets a huge laugh. But then if I do a joke about gay people, they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm like, well, that was a joke. And then the other one was about killing me, and you're fine with that? We we have weird uh, rules now of like what's bad and what's good, you know. At but do you get fired up sometimes when you know you've made everyone uncomfortable? I'm not. Yeah, that's not my. That's not your thing. Is. I <laughs> like to. I want to kill. <laughs> These comics are like, I walked half the room. I'm a badass. I, I keep it real up there. And you're like, you walked half the room. That's a bummer. These yeah. people showed up, and now they're leaving. They hate you. <laughs> I want to. I want to crush. Yeah, I want the whole room to crowd surf yeah. me out of there. Me too. Yeah. I, I don't mean like turning half people away. I just mean like where you get that sort of, oh, oh yeah, that's oh. kind of fun. But but then <laughs> you know you're setting them up yes. for something else. I have yeah. a Kobe Bryant joke where I I throw a uh, you know a fucked up part in there and be like Jesus, and then I twist it and they're like ah, that's like great, that's like <laughs> yeah. a little magic trick with words, and it's that's that's fun comedy. That's awesome. But I don't want to I don't want to hurt anybody. <laughs> you know. <laughs> How often do you change your act? I try to write, you know, I just did a Netflix thing and uh, now I'm working on a new hour and it's it's finally clicking, much like your knee. You know, it's really <laughs> uh, finally getting somewhere, but it takes forever to, to build. Is that what you're doing at the improv? Yeah, new hour. And it's eventually it'll be a uh, special. How is that in the world of comedy now where you know you're 
you're building up to something that's pr- you're, you're probably going to make it a special. Yeah, eventually. And but you know that people have seen it and possibly recorded it. Yeah, that's horrible. That seems like the the tricky part of all that. Oh wow! So they yeah. post it. Yeah, they'll post clips, and usually if a if a, a lady was filming in the front row and I called her out and they they grabbed her. But uh, you never know who's in the back doing it and whatnot, and they can post it, and it's it's terrifying because you're like, this is this is my money, this is my work, this yeah. is my livelihood here, and you're just letting it out there because a joke. Once you hear it, it's over. It's not like a song where you play "Stairway to Heaven" nine hundred times. Once you hear the trick, the turn of a joke, that's done. So right. You, you so that yeah, I think that would, that would be a concern just with the, the age of social media and everyone's got phones and yeah. Well, now they be... got these bags, these yonder uh, yeah. bags, which is like, I think everywhere is going to start. Because a couple clubs do it, but I think it's going to be the norm eventually. Yeah, it doesn't seem to trigger people, but like I thought it would. A little. Got to you, give your phone, but you people get a little don't. Bit, but yeah, nothing. but the odds of you don't go in. Yeah, yeah. You're going in. Oh yeah, you're going in. Yeah. The first time I saw that was at a movie premiere. Oh yeah. Yeah, years ago, mm. and it was super. Everyone's just like, "What? Yeah, I give up my take phone. my phone? Exactly. And how am I going to get it back? I think I got. <laughs> when I went to Danzig. They did that. When Danzig yeah. did Elvis covers. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. And they were like, "We're bagging your phone." And I was like, "Fair enough." Yeah. I would have filmed that. And you know <laughs> no. what? You'll be in the show more. You'll you'll enjoy it more. You'll appreciate yeah. it more because then you're not that. like, let me just check Twitter real quick. You know? Yeah. My daughter just went to a, a theater camp in New York, and as soon as you get to camp. Is that right? Oh, on, yeah. That's awesome. That's a great yeah. school then. I know. Yeah, I, it was pretty cool. It was it was weird not to be in touch with her for so long. And they let they let you email. Uh-huh. She's not the most proficient emailer, so. Because it's lame. There's no music or any dancing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> email sucks. <laughs> and then part of us goes, how do how am I going to be away from this? And then you realize, yeah. oh, that's just what my childhood was. Yeah. And, and oh. my 20s. You know, I didn't have a phone in my 20s. I saw a thing t- today say people... Uh, wouldn't take a job for Lifeguard, Tim Dillon show. Uh, lifeguards are hard to come by because people don't want the job because they don't get to uh, s- swipe their phone. They're, they have to work. They have to watch. They have to watch. You have to watch ocean. people don't drown and people find that to be an unbearable ah, job. That's and I'm like, you're in a seat on the beach. Yes. But you can't swipe, so you're saying no job, no deal. <laughs> the only the only requirement really beyond knowing CPR is that you have to pay attention. Exactly, yeah. that's it. But that's a that's a it's good money too. He said it's sad because lifeguard was like a up. Oh, speak of the devil, he checked his phone. That's he's my, got he's got daughter. kids. Too. Uh, she heard me say theater camp. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the that's the rub now is like everything we get so technologically advanced and modernized that like normal stuff is now slavery you know yeah. like you're gonna just sit there without a phone i can't do that what am yeah. i as a psycho but that was just normal you know that's like someone telling me i'm just gonna sit here and not drink a bottle of whiskey it's like yeah a lot of people do that yeah right? <laughs> yeah. not that hard oh yeah that was normal you should just sit in a waiting room and maybe pick up a weird oh, magazine yeah, yeah. We, we talked about that recently where if or you with your parents you they're going to the bank you're Going to the bank with going him, to the bank, standing in line and sucking it up, spinning around the yes, stanchions. Yes. Like, it was a, the most dull, boring <laughs> thing. thing. You'd thing. On the, Getting on the in pile. trouble for knocking those ropes over. Yeah, always. <laughs> you're playing with the pen. Stop hanging off the or rope. Like you could click it out of the thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would unclick it and let myself into the nightclub and then kick myself. <laughs> <out. laughs> there was a kid you said to make fun. You just sit there and be like, "All right, I bet I can throw this ball into that uh, drain over there." And that was a game. Or yeah. Whatever it was, you had to just figure something out. <laughs> How'd you, I can hit you with a rock, you know? <laughs> yeah. You have to work on not getting hit by the rock, which yes. is also entertaining. Yes. yes. And yeah. there you go. And then you try to go inside. Your mom's like, get back out there. Yeah. Like, All right. I guess we're stuck outside. <laughs> yeah, it's a little different now. Yeah, yeah. But I can't tell if it's better or worse. Like uh, this guy, Ronnie Chang, is a funny joke about how Twitter eventually will be looked at like cigarettes. You know, like, you used Twitter when you were pregnant. Holy shit. You know? <laughs> it's a great joke. And I, I wonder if we're getting there. Like, we're starting to see the uh, the side effects and the bad symptoms from social media or whatever. So, who knows? I feel like being stationary for long periods of time is not healthy for humans. And I mm. feel like phones... 
uh, really, promote that. They oh, really yeah. do. Sure. Well, you how know? long are you shitting now? I used to shit in eight seconds. Now I'm like, well, let me read War and Peace. <laughs> we just talked, one of my kids, we just talked about that. Like, how are you in there for 40 minutes? Well, I finished early, but I just, you know, sit there. You scroll and what? YouTube. Yeah, whatever. It's right there. It's bad for your butthole. But, yeah, is? but I mean, it. Every time it's like 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, hemorrhoids f- has got to be up <laughs> with phone with phones coming out. Hemorrhoids must be way up. <laughs> well, how old are your kids? Uh, they're all either late teens or oh, all right, 20s. So you're, you're about done. Um, yeah. Well, my my daughter's still home. She's 14, but um, yeah. This is but everyone's we are Fourth of July weekend. Oh yeah, everyone's home right now. So that's fun. That's what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. You have kids? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You because got- I'm a foreigner on uh, holidays for the country, I ha- I'm by myself. Uh, they, they, he has, he and she have family that will celebrate the 4th mm-hmm. of July, and I'm Australian. Oh, right, right. And I don't have any family. So if you come to my house, you're going to like watch the fights and play video games. Uh, so I'm like, go there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I, I obviously want to have you, but. I'm not going to give you anywhere near as cool of 4th of July as your mom is. So. Right, right. I'll see you guys next week. Man, Australians are fucking terrifying. <laughs> well, I think you guys are the craziest whites. <laughs> you really think? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've, I've been there. I figured Irish are the craziest whites. I mean, Irish are booze bags and fun. And uh, I love Irish people. And I love Australian people. But I've, I've noticed that Australian people do not give a fuck i mean you got scorpions this big the sun the heat you're <laughs> you're from criminal blood you know yeah it, that's true all that stuff so i just i mean from comedy shows if you have an australian crowd it's gonna get rowdy did you get bullied for skating oh yeah oh yeah it was just very like chain wallety punky you know street kid you know and then the kid with the polo and the convertible was he was the cool guy oh wow yeah i mean that's- i'm from the south that's a terrible town. Sorry. <laughs> just that guy's not cool. That's just how it went. Yeah. It, it's like um, Pretty in Pink or whatever. Oh, that movie. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like the the football guy, the tall kid, the rich kid, the blonde kid. That was yeah. that was the sexy guy. It was it was crazy how stereotypical all the characters were. I know. Like in our youth. Yeah. Totally, where totally. it was the jock and it was the cheerleader and 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 you can say, well, no, everyone's got all these different qualities. And like, but it really was that segregated. It seems oh, like yeah. that. It was really strange. I don't think we had that. Really? I Maybe really don't. American, like, but... I feel like it was just, well, for one, I never knew a rich kid in school and I never knew a kid that owned a car. Wow. More or less a polo, like a, an expensive fucking sweatshirt. Like, sure. none of us had anything. Yeah. Like, I, the first time I ever saw a young person in a car driving himself was here where I was like, that, the cops are busting that guy in the next 15 minutes. That's stolen. And everyone's like, what are you talking about? Everybody, yeah. all students get new cars. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean they get new cars? Because you can't do the lease thing, the financing like you do here. Uh, like the banks are just like, fuck right. it. You, you don't need any money. Right, just, right. just sign this and we'll give you the car. In Australia, when you get your first car when you're a kid. You buy it. It's a piece of shit Right, you bought it. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that, that was mine. My 1977 Civic hatchback. Ooh, quit bragging. <laughs> <laughs> did you have a scooter but, as well? Uh, I did, but that was when I was 15. And mm-hmm. then I got pulled over and then I had to give it up. But because uh, I, w- I looked like I was 12 and I was 15. So. Right, right. But um, I went to a school that was in a pretty affluent area, but it still was a public school. So there was a, a great disparity of, of wealth in mm-hmm. the school. And so I'd roll up uh, with my Civic hatchback and into like next to a brand new Porsche 911. Right. Weird. So strange. Yeah. Wait, and that was a student's car. That was a student's car. That's See what I mean? Crazy. That's in, that never yeah. happened in the history of all schools in Australia. Yeah. It just And now, still today, nobody has that. Yeah. Yeah. But that fucks with your ego as a kid. It's, like, it's almost like when your mom buys a check instead of Coke. Or you eat cereal out of a bag, you know. You're like, oh, I, it just hit, hurts you self esteem. I think. I remember I had a friend that had soda in his fridge, and I remember going home and telling my dad that uh, my friend's rich. Yeah. And he's like, why? I'm like, he has just like a six pack of cokes in the fridge, right? And he just drank one and walked off. Yeah. Nah. And, and now, he's like, oh, sorry. I can't no, go ahead. Well, now being poor is cool. 
in a weird way. Like, like Mark Cuban wears cargo shorts and flip flops because he's like, I don't want to look rich. You know, it's like he's not, the every man. He's the every man. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to you don't want to be too rich looking now. Yeah, Even though we all know he's rich. Well, I'm not that rich, so I like looking rich. It's cool. nah, that's, that's the thing. If you're not rich, you like looking rich. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. With all the with all the bling. Yeah. Bling's still a thing. I mean, yeah. watches and I wear true. it less, but I also don't. I feel like the level got so high that my half starter kit is not even worth bringing up. <laughs> it's just like, oh, oh, you're trying to get some jewelry? That's cute. I'm like, yeah, I don't have a $100,000 watch. I have a watch you gave me. <laughs> Yeah. Which I still think is fucking awesome. The independent oh, Nixon the watch. watch yeah. I fucking love that watch. That's yeah. crazy. I got a Timex. $10. I heard it beep on the hour. I know. I know. I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> really? It's a piece of garbage. It's a Timex. But I like the watch. I like the look. And is it's that simple. your way of being an everyman? I guess so. I, I like the vintage. It looks vintage it to does. me. So yeah. I thought yeah. I liked. But it was, you know. No, $12. from here, I'm like, whatever, cool guy. Ah, <laughs> this is cheap shit. Yeah, which makes you even cooler. All right, you see? But you figured out how to make a watch look cool for no money while people think that maybe you've got money because right. that watch is cool. <laughs> exactly. But you don't even care about money. Look at this piece of shit. That's nah, your angle? No, nah. Well, if I had uh, that, that's what, a thousand? Yeah. Yeah, if I had a watch that was 50 grand, I would never wear it because I would just be like, I right, I'll, I'll get stolen, I'll scratch it. I've always wanted to get a Rolex Daytona. Yeah, but it's like can watch. it's like 30, 40 grand. Uh, I one time I brought it up for my, my 50th birthday. I was like, hey, business manager, think about buying myself fucking Roly for my birthday, 50. Yeah. He's like, hey, which one? How much? I was like, this one. He's like, no, no, you shouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm but, like, fuck, are you sure? He's like, yeah, I'm really sure. They say they never depreciate the watch. That's what I kept telling They always him. go up, yeah. So I was you, like, I'll give it to myself. As long as you don't slam in it right. while wearing it. <laughs> right, yeah. I hope you weren't Happened. skating in a Rolex. No, I did buy it. Uh, one of the first nice watches I bought, I just was like, I'm keeping it real. I'm skating in and I destroyed the face. Oh. Yeah, I learned my lesson. Well, <sighs> what's cool about Rolex? I'm an everyman. Yeah, <laughs> I have to skate in it. Hey, okay. <laughs> Rolex is free to, to fix as a lifetime warranty. You can just go in and go, hey, the band broke and they'll fix it. Fun fact. I'm going to tell my business manager that. Yeah, there Might you go. Might be worth it now. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, yeah, send us a watch, Rolex. Yeah, you're listening. What was send your what, awesome when you when you started to make money at what you do or decent money? What was your big first big purchase? I bought a uh, BMW 1973 O2, like a 2002. I don't know if you know cars at all. Yeah, but I love that car. It's cute. It's zippy. It's fun. It's old. I love old cars, and uh, it just sits in a garage now. I was gonna say, do you fix? Can you fix old cars if they break down? I want to learn, but I, I'm an idiot. Right. So I, I'm lazy. But I want to get under there and get a splotch of oil on my face and <laughs> you know, change the carburetor. Just start hitting a wrench on yeah. the motor. Yeah, I want to be that guy who slides out and he goes, yeah. hey, what's shaking? Throw me a beer, you know? <laughs> but I'm still a wuss. Yeah. But uh, I do love that car, and I bought, a, I bought a scooter. It still runs? Oh, it runs like a champ. It really, I had a friend, he's a mechanic, he, he did all the work. But I uh, love that car, and I like real estate. I want to buy a big bunch of stuff, big bunch of buildings. Where do you live these days? I live in Manhattan. So I'm trying to buy a big place in Brooklyn, maybe somewhere I can put the car, put the scooter, maybe buy a podcast studio, Ooh. buy an apartment building. I, I like real estate. <laughs> I can't afford it. But one day. It just feels like it's always going up. It's got to, that, that's, that can't be forever, right? I Probably not, but at least you don't have to. It just is. You just... That building is there and I yeah. own it. Yeah. I yeah. kind of like that. I stocks and crypto, I can't wrap my head around. And then when California goes into the sea, there'll be even less land. Yeah, good point. Remember that tool guy sung the song where we're going to have to learn to swim. Learn to swim. <laughs> learn to swim. And you guys are... Uh, is mean, that how you found out about the uh, the San Andreas Fault? Yeah. It was through Tool. The only thing I... The only I, I swear, that's got to be a thing. For, right, really? Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything comes from shit like that. I, all my <laughs> all my political news comes from Tim Dillon. <laughs> so if he didn't guy. talk about it, I don't know what's happening. Right, right. And he's a the fun way to hear the news because yeah. if you watch the news, you just get bummed out. Yeah. So listening to him is more yeah, fun. He makes it upbeat. Yeah. Even when it's really bad news. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but we got to move on on something else because yeah. I feel like every pot I do, we're like, here we go with the cancel talk. And blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, I, I just, I think people are sick of it. And what's I think the people biggest ramp you've on. dropped in on? Oh, jeez. <laughs> 
What is that? Thirteen? Yeah, uh, maybe fourteen. Is it? It's oh uh, yes, yeah, thirteen and a half. Yeah. Okay, I might have done a ten in my day. So a vert ramp. Yeah, but it was bad. I mean, I got wiggly and fell and hit the wall. But you dropped in. I dropped in. That counts. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. That that that's legit. All right. What was your what was your most tech like flip trick? My best flip trick that I could do consistently, because there's some where you've just landed once and you got it on video and you're you're the That's hot every shit. Flip trick I do. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, you post it, you're like, you're good. I'm like, that took eight hours. Yeah. But I could kick flip front side nose slide shove it out. Oh, that was, that was a smooth looking trick. All the time you had that. I mean, you know, one out of one out of six, That's I could do fucking it. Fucking good. It was fun. Where I was can we find that video. Uh well, I actually had a we made a skate video when I was a kid, me and all my friends, much like a mouse, where there's a lot of jokes and stuff in it, yeah. toy machine. And uh, it got ruined during Katrina, but we're we're working on finding it. Ah, oh, come on! Yeah, my friend had a big box of tapes, and the you know the flood killed it. Yeah, we but... need it. We need his kid flip nose slide. Oh, oh man, we need that in the highlight video. of my life. I know that's like that's like some Sasquatch thing. Like, did it really exist? Uh, <laughs> I, believe it. I can make a few phone calls. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, that was that was big. I was a real tech tech guy because the the heights would freak me out. I'm a, I'm a wuss. Like jumping off eight giant stairs or or a huge ledge, you know. Remember, like the building docks that was big. Jumping off of those was a. It's got to be worse for you though, to be a tech guy because I always felt like, um, tech stuff when I get really old is going to be out the window because I don't have the the reflexes that I used to have. Sure, sure. So it's going to be a little bit more dangerous. But I always feel like, um. Maybe not flying around face high, but when I'm in my 60s, if I play my cards right, yeah. I could probably still click a couple of backs of this, cause some grinds, sure. because those are super safe to me. And they're still, that's still really skateboarding. You're flying around. Yeah. But if you're somebody that just handles nolly flips all day and then you get to 55, 60, is it like a nolly flip? Could, you could risk breaking both your ankles. Is it really worth it? Yeah. Or is it not like that? I feel like if I'm low to the ground, I'm all right, which okay. might be stupid. And you're flying up in the air twisting. And I'm like, what if he catches a, an ankle on the coping or oh. or something? Or you slip backwards. Or twist your ankle on a knee slide. Yes. <laughs> which he did today. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I just like, I mean, look at Daywan Song. I mean, all, all the guy needs is a curb. And this guy can do uh, yeah. you That's know, not magic. normal. No, that's not. I mean, he's, he's an anomaly. Yeah. Anomaly. His trucks. He is an anomaly. Are so fucking his trucks, loose. Are, his trucks are hand tightened. No yeah. way, dude. He'll Whoa. another person will grab his board and do that, and you will go. Shh, no way, Whoa. you ride that. Oh, wow. He rode Bert with me in Ventura once, and that's when I noticed his trucks. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, don't drop in on that board because he had his tail up and his front truck was just going. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I think your truck's broken, dude. He's like, no, that's how I have him. I'm like, how? Are you, how do you do that? Yeah, he's like a Picasso with that stuff. It's 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 art. Watching him 360 flip in and land on one wheel and manual to a Have you seen where he, he's in the manual and then he actually takes his wheel off? No. See him do a kickflip <laughs> on a mini ramp where he takes his wheel off and puts another one back on? Yeah. What? Yeah. That in dude the does air? In a manual. Yeah. yeah. Holy hell. Yeah. How old is he he's now? He's magical. He's got to be up there. He's got to be 40-ish. Yeah, he's younger right. than me, but not much. So 45 yeah. probably. Little guy? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I mean, uh, short, but not but stocky. Okay. What about Rodney? Is he tall? Oh, uh, he's not excessively tall, but he's okay. not, it's not short. No. Those two together is <laughs> quite a uh, yeah. quite a sight. So who who were your favorite skaters in your heyday of skating? Well, I'm old school or or my generation. I was obsessed with Jamie Thomas mm. just because he got so burly. And then I loved Costin because he was good and fun. I liked uh, like a Rick McCrank, Brian Anderson, Mark Johnson to me is maybe one of the smoothest mm. uh, tech guys. And he could do big stuff. So, uh, yeah, I was in that world. Like Jeff Rowley. Am I saying that right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Arto Sari mm -hmm. was fun. Uh, what's that guy's name? Oh, sexy black guy from Philly. Ah, he always had shirts. Stevie? That might be it. DGK? It. Yeah, that might be it. All right, but I had a four one one subscription. I mean, I was all in. Uh, I was obsessed. Well, it's awesome that you carry that through. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, I, I do feel like, and I didn't mean to say like we, we're so apples and oranges. I meant like there's a lot of synergy, obviously. Sure. And I'm sure a lot of lessons that you 
learned skating. Oh, yeah. Carried through to comedy, especially with trying and failing. Yeah, exactly. That's all. Did you hear what Seinfeld said about skateboarding? Yes, yes I yeah, did. How cool. cool was that? It was cool. Because he's like a blazer wearing uh, New York kind of. Who doesn't, he just doesn't seem like he says a lot of nice things it, about other people. Exactly. And I'm like, that was an incredibly nice thing to say about skateboarding. Yeah, and just the fact that he's seen a skateboarder and had that thought is was insane to me. I would I would assume he would see a skateboarder and go, get a job, you bum. It's funny. <laughs> yeah. He had, when he first started doing the charity organization, he had, um, what's the famous actress in ha- Halloween? Jamie Lee Curtis? Yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis. She loves him and she spoke about him and skateboarding and how what? the foundation is good for skateboarding, good for kids because yeah. you see this, like Tony, fail and try and try again and this is how life is. yeah she was an avid yeah. supporter of our foundation really? big time for a few yeah. years yeah all right and she I explained a, it really well i have a funny story we <clears throat> i met with this uh production studio about a project i can't talk about it but the head of the production studio big wig dude has done a lot of successful shows and he came to one of those events to stand up for skate parks beverly hills and he's like hey man i just want to tell you i came to that event one time and my son um he wanted me to, to bid on the bike that you were auctioning. And we used to auction these kids' bikes. And he's like, so I bought the bike. And then I couldn't get in the car. And so I had to ride it home from Beverly Hills <laughs> to Hancock Park. <laughs> what? Wow, what is that? This dude's big wig. And so he's just on this little bike. Like, uh, <laughs> I was like, that's the best story that I've heard from our charity event. Ever. Right, right, right. That's a sick dad. Though. I digress. Sorry about that. No, no. Uh, that's badass. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was pretty cool. cool. So he left the yeah. car there. No, no. His wife took the car. Oh, home. that's hilarious. His wife and kids drove home and then he took the bike that his kid wanted <laughs> so that good. I had signed. What a dad. Right? Yeah. Super dad. Flex Looking like right a there. circus act. Yeah, I wish that was my dad. <laughs> but these kids now, they're doing shit I've never even heard of. Yeah. Oh, like it's, every, everything is like, one. yeah, it's like video game combo. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Yeah. It's crazy. And do you, do you guys much watch that and get discouraged? Like, I guess that ship has sailed for me. Chris Joslin. Uh, that's his name. Oh, Chris Joslin. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So good. <clears throat> um, yeah, I don't think, I mean, it's it's just our, we don't do that style of skating. So oh, I think more we're right. fascinated that's by right. it. I, I, for, there was a. But they're doing were, it on here too. There's new people on the very end oh, that are doing sure. stuff where I'm like, yeah. I usually say to myself, that was a good call getting into radio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when somebody does something where I go, oh, I was never going to. Yeah. Do well, you, right. you came in just as Jimmy Wilkins was leaving, but Jimmy Wilkins just did a, a new trick that is something we never even would have considered doing because yeah. we couldn't have figured it out. Wow. And it's insane. Yeah. Crossbone yeah. lean 540. Just, yeah. like, he's just doing them like. So sick. Though. He's doing them in his runs now. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy. It's so gnarly. Yeah. Damn. It's, it's like a whole new way. To, it's, it reminds me of like, I wasn't there, but McGill did a McTwist and everybody in skateboarding was like, how the fuck does that work? Yep. This is like that. But yep. in this era where I'm like, I saw the, it just went viral. Everybody in skateboarding started posting it and I was like, he, oh, I and now I'm on the this. couch and I'm like, like holding a board yeah, on my yeah. foot. I'm like, he fucking, <laughs> holy shit, dude. That is, and he does it. And he makes it look like it's nothing. Yeah, well, skateboard tricks, it's kind of like the four-minute mile, Roger Bannister. Once he did it, everybody... Oh, absolutely. Just, it uh, just yeah. makes your brain yeah. go, oh, I can do that. It's, it's 900 now is is not that crazy. That happened to me when I came to America. As soon as I came to America and watched these people do it real life in mm-hmm. front of me, I, I went back to Australia as easily the best skateboarder in Australia. Whoa. And they were like, how'd you learn that many tricks? I'm like, because I saw everybody do it right in front of me every day. <laughs> yeah. it was when no you know choice. it's possible, it's a little easier to yeah. attain. Exactly, exactly. Like your bisexuality. <laughs> Once I saw somebody yeah, blow you somebody. Yeah. I you don't have to expand on it. Okay. Yeah. He kind of nailed oh, it there. Then, then yes. <laughs> Once you saw those videos, you're like, all right, I'm in. Oh, that's how you do that. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> hey, Mark. Hey. Thank you, thank thank you for you, man. coming by. Yeah. That's Thanks, fun. Um, I apologize for getting into all the cancel. I feel like it just flowed there. but No, no. I and I know. It. And I, hey, I'm, I'm sick of talking about it too. I'm sick of worrying about it. Um, I, I could talk about it all day. I just read the comments like, enough with that. I'm like, all right, yeah, all right. We'll, sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll try to abbreviate no, it anyway. No, no. Keep it all but, in. But, but, I, but I appreciate your honesty and and um, Good luck uh, at the improv tonight. And Thank you, sir. I know you got a lot of dates coming up, but what is like something big? We're, this will be airing on the 11th. 
Uh, yeah, I have a I have a special on uh, YouTube, special on Netflix. I have a podcast called We Might Be Drunk and a podcast called Tuesdays with Stories. Um, check out my website. I'm coming to every town in, in America uh, and Canada. So and don't record him. Yes. Thank you. What's the website? MarkNormanComedy.com. There you go. There you go. Praise right. Allah. That's it. See you next week, everybody. Like and subscribe. See ya.